welcome to um, this next version of our Psychiatry Research Pathway Annual Symposium. Um, the, the purpose of this is to give us all as a community an opportunity to hear uh, what seven members of our Psychiatry Research Pathway have been doing. The first presentation was by Dr. S uh, Cindy Chu, who's working with her mentor, Rob Sweet. Cindy is a fourth year child fellow. Her talk was on cell type specific type one cannabinoid receptor distribution across the human and non-human primate cortex. So in particular, I chose healthy young adult male macaque monkeys brain samples, as well as healthy adult male human postmortem samples. For brain regions, I was in particular interested in the PFC given its involvement in an array of psychiatric disorders, including substance use and psychosis. And I was also interested in the primary and associative auditory cortices seen here. And this has given our group's interest in studying the auditory dysfunctions within psychosis, our understanding that cannabinoids can exacerbate positive psychotic symptoms. And some studies also suggesting a possible role of CB1 in modulating and regulating auditory processing in animals. The second presentation was given by Dr. Matt Jeremita, who's working with his mentor, Dr. Suzanne Amari. Uh, Matt is in the first half of his PGY3 year. He spoke to us about the interaction of reversal learning and repetitive grooming in the lateral orbital frontal cortex in a rodent model of compulsive behavior. Imaging studies also show that patients with OCD display abnormal activity in the orbital frontal cortex during reversal learning. Interestingly, unaffected siblings of patients with OCD also display this abnormal activity in the OFC, which is one piece of evidence suggesting that deficits in reversal learning are causal to the compulsive behavior, right? But this, this idea that reversal learning deficits are causal has very little data to support it. And that's one of the overarching questions that we wanted to answer in this study, right? And we're gonna be taking the hypothesis that these reversal learning deficits cause compulsive behaviors. And the exact experimental hypothesis that we wanted to test was that the neurons in the LOFC that are disrupted during grooming are the exact same neurons that show abnormal encoding of reversal learning. This question can't be addressed in humans right now. We don't have the technology to do it, but the technology does exist in mice. This presentation was given by Dr. Wanjie Chung, whose mentor is Dr. David Lewis. Uh, Wanjie is at the beginning of his research time in, as a PGY3. He spoke on synaptic variability and altered gamma oscillations in schizophrenia. Our next experiment was to introduce variability to our network, but what is the degree of the variability that we should be introducing to our model network? So we wanted to introduce the degree of variability to our model network that was biologically relevant, especially to the range that can be found in human prefrontal cortex, which is the brain region that we're actually interested in. So we were able to get this range by reanalyzing uh, the immunohistochemical data from our previous study. So in this uh, previous study, we stained uh, the prefrontal cortical sections of 20 pairs of schizophrenia and uh, pair control subjects with antibodies against VGLUT1, shown here in blue color for, as a pre stepping marker and against PS95, shown here in red color as a post stamping marker. And finally, antibody against the parvalbumin is a cell-specific marker shown here in green color. And then we were able to define the excitatory synaptic inputs to PV cells by the overlap between VGL1 positive puncta and PS95 positive puncta onto PV positive cell bodies. Cy Folsby, a third year resident, working with Dr. Suzanne Amari, spoke on investigating molecular and cellular differences in postmortem brains of individuals with obsessive compulsive disorder. 
there are a lot of genes that have been identified that are probably related to the development of OCD. And when you put them on a diagram like this, you can kind of see that perhaps the reason why all these genes keep getting pulled down and then being related to OCD, it's because there's a shared common pathway. And that shared common pathway is the maintenance of the dendritic spine. And so that's a way of bridging this understanding for why are these transmembrane proteins, signaling receptors, actin, myosin, regulatory factors, all related to OCD? It's because they might all be, in fact, impacting dendritic spines. C.C. Westbrook, who is in the middle of her 10-week research block as a PGY2, working with mentor Lauren Hallion, spoke about neural mechanisms of disengagement from perseverative thought. So, the goals of my project were to utilize data from an existing fMRI study of perseverative thought and disengagement to search for convergent and divergent neural mechanisms. So, um, out of the box, just using a standard univariate approach um, to study these questions. And then to utilize novel fMRI methods to seek new insights into these neural mechanisms. So this is sort of a training goal for me to learn um, how to get better at multivariate pattern analysis and other types of multivariate fMRI analysis techniques, um, particularly unsupervised cluster-based machine learning, which is a data-driven approach, to see if there's new insights we can learn about what types of brain mechanisms are involved in perseverative thought and the process of disengaging from perseverative thought. Eric Zimmerman, who is in his 10-week research block as a PGY2, working with mentor Suzanne Amari, spoke about his research on encoding of action sequences by the mesolimbic dopamine system. We will detect dopamine release in these mice using a novel construct called GRABDA. Uh, GRABDA is a modified version of the human D2 dopamine receptor that has a circular EGFP molecule inserted into its structure. <laughs> And what this does is it makes it so that when GRABDA binds dopamine, it actually fluoresces. Um, so this receptor can give us a optical readout of the dopamine that, is, that it is currently detecting. Um, this receptor can be transfected into a particular area of brain tissue using a viral vector. And in order to detect the fluorescence, we will use photometry. Uh, we will gather these data via an implanted optical fiber and the data from this technique are reported in change in fluorescence over time. Yujing Chung, a PGY2 resident, working with her mentor David Lewis, spoke about work she conducted during her four-week research block at the end of her PGY1 year. This work uh, addressed the question, what is the upstream mechanism of ultra transcription and splicing in schizophrenia? Um, last year, the PRP and ORT has been generous enough to grant me a four weeks of research time in place of um, VA clinical rotation. And this is what I did during that time. I'm primarily interested in alteration in neural circuitry that underlies the pathophysiology of schizophrenia. And past studies from our lab have shown that deficits in excitatory synaptic input to pyramidal neurons and parvalbumin neurons are observed in the prefrontal cortex of patients with schizophrenia. Additionally, we have shown that altered transcription and splicing may play an important role in synaptic dysfunction in schizophrenia. The question that I initially asked is, what is the upstream mechanism that underlies the alteration in transcription and splicing that are observed in schizophrenia. After each presentation, there were multiple questions from members of the live audience, as well as uh, via chat from those who were uh, attending virtually. 